Yo, remember when this guy made 16 billion dollars just disappear like that? Two billion of which is still unaccounted for? Well, no, unlike, you know, previous thieves in the past, this guy has a very, very deep claws into the Democratic Party, so he's out there giving interviews, of course. Nothing sus or nothing weird about that. Hell, we don't want justice or anything like that. Did you see Kanye West have dinner with Donald Trump? Enough. Enough. Bankman Freed discusses Democrat donations, relationship with Ukraine, and more. Let's take a look. Let's get some of the cliff notes, shall we? FTX founder Sam Bankman Freed granted a rare interview. Oh, it's so nice. How much did you have to pay in order to show up? With independent crypto journalist, yuck, Tiffany Fong. In a conversation, the elusive founder. Is that the fu is that a fun way of saying, um, he fled to the Bahamas, and um, nobody can really pin him down right now, and there's no extradition. That's kind of odd. Address a number of controversies that have surrounded him in the past few weeks, including commingling client funds, relations with Ukraine, donations to the Democratic Party, and more. I'm not a journalist, but profession. Oh, by profession. That makes more sense. Fong told the Times. Uh, she explained that her introduction to reporting came after losing a substantial portion of her savings in the collapse of the decentralized finance project Celsius in June. Ooh, uh, a, a topic she then began covering. Yeah, uh, the red flags on Celsius were apparent for the people who know inside the industry. But uh, yeah, she's an independent crypto journalist and she's, is she that's definitely her thing, right? She's definitely not trying to hop on a popular topic. According to Fong, she was able to land the interview because Bankman Freed found her attractive. Or I'm sorry, had found her on Twitter. <laughs> Sliding into the DMs. Hi, would you like to be a part of my harem? What, what do you think about large mansions in the Bahamas? After being intrigued by her reporting on Celsius, which led to a few but brief friendly exchanges between the two, the recorded phone call posted to Fong's YouTube channel touches on many of the headlines that have appeared across the spectrum of media since the story broke in early November. When uh, was that New York Times meeting supposed to take place? Anyways, I talked about the same amount of... Oh, I donated about the same amount to both parties, Bankman Freed told Fong when asked about his political donations. Well, that's just a provable lie. The crypto exchange founder, uh, political donations have been widely publicized in recent weeks, with numerous outlets reporting the Bankman Freed personally donated almost $40 million to Democrat candidates ahead of the 2020 midterms, only outdone by George Soros. We know that. All my Republican donations were dark. So, why would you do that? Okay, if you knew that you would be under the microscope because you were so well connected within, you know, the Democratic Party, why wouldn't those donations be public? Okay, but because some of them are like there's some money linked to you that was donated to a few Republican causes, but it's outweighed 99 to 1. So and the reason uh, was not for regulatory reasons. It's because reporters freak the fuck out when you donate to Republicans because they are super liberal. Don't try to don't try to walk this stuff back. We know what your family and your girlfriend's family are all about. You guys are super fucking Democrats, so don't don't try to run this whole oh yeah, I'm against woke shit too. It's like bro, we know what you're all about. We know what time it is. Bankman Freed uh, went on to add that the general elections don't matter to him. Why'd you spend so much money on it, bro? Uh, oh, to him, nor to other top donors. According to him, the smart money is spent on primary candidates because they offer a more meaningful range of choices. According to Open Secrets data, only $235,000 of Bankman Freed's political donations went to Republicans. However, his co-CEO, Ryan Salam, we talked about him before, uh, donated $23 million to Republicans and conservative groups. Relationship with Ukraine. All right, so where does the, all the money laundering shit uh, shake out? I wish I could have pulled that off, Bankman Freed joint referencing a popular theory. And FTX in Ukraine were colluding to launder humanitarian donations. Yeah, no, I wish that could have happened, just like you wish you could have made how many billions of dollars I'd go away. Yeah, funny. Uh, in March, FTX in Ukraine partnered to set up a donation platform to facilitate crypto payments to the National Bank of Ukraine. Yeah, funny. Funny. Partnership catalyzed speculations which substantiation oh with substantial reach being covered by Fox News anchor Jesse Waters. Democrats spend money to Ukraine, Ukraine sends money to FTX, and FTX sends money to Democrat campaigns. Yeah, no. 
Seems to check out, right? I wish I was part of an international conspiracy. That interesting, he said. Yeah, of course. Where are you again? In the Bahamas. Right. Why are you, you there exclusively? Oh, okay, cool. All right, and now for the main event. Toward the end of the interview, Fong pressed Bankman Freed on the misuse of user funds. Various news organizations, including the Wall Street Journal, reported the Bankman Freed's crypto investment company, Alameda Research, had tapped into FTX's customer funds to finance reckless trading ventures. When asked how FTX funds ended up on Alameda's balance sheet, he stuttered through a lengthy response and eventually answered that it ultimately came down to a large margin position, meaning that Alameda was making investments with loaned capital. Oh, oh, pressed to explain further. Uh, he's like, oh, I, I can't hear you anymore. Our connection's getting foggy and I, I, I'm, 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 I'm got to go. The former billionaire, former billionaire, come on now, suggested that appropriating customer funds to margin accounts is sort of the norm. See, see guys, everybody does it. So the fact that I made billions go away, uh, it's not out of it's what the business is built on. Come on implying that Alameda Research was simply fulfilling the role of a very large customer. Okay, cool. Uh, then, referring to the general uh, decline in crypto assets this year, Bankman Freed noted the hyper-correlated crash diminished the value of Alameda's collateral and made it impossible to come up with sufficient funds to pay back the loans. Appearing to contradict his claims that loaning customers' funds was the norm, Bankman Freed wrote on a now-deleted tweet, We don't Invest, client assets. Oh, even in treasuries. Oh no, but I thought it was the norm. So maybe that's anything outside of the norm. We don't do that outside of what we normally do. Okay, don't worry about it. Tweet post in early November as a crisis was just beginning to unravel. It also reassured customers that FDX had ample cash to repay all customers. Well, uh, that didn't end up being true, but seems to be quite the vociferous liar. Bankman Freed also briefly addressed the back door. <laughs> <laughs> which one pause uh which sources told reuters he used the funnel ftx funds to alameda despite founding several billion dollar at digital asset companies he claimed that he barely knows how to code and wouldn't be able to design such a complex tool bro you can barely run a fucking company you just managed to use your extensive network of well-connected individuals in order to make a fuck ton of money i think that's the technical term uh, the interview concluded with a former crypto magnate expressing remorse in the future. Oh, my future is also not the thing that matters here. What matters is the world's future. Oh, what a fucking humanitarian that we have here. That's nice. Yeah, but let's take a look at his past and probably his present. And if we're being completely honest, his future as well. FTX executives spent wildly and showered workers with lavish perks, such as free food and massages. Amazon deliveries by private jet in the months before the cryptocurrency site's catastrophic collapse, according to former employees. FTX is holy fuck. Uh, headquarters in the Bahamas featured daily catering in addition to free groceries. <laughs> okay. Barbershop pop-ups and bi-weekly massages, a former uh, worker told the Financial Times. Workers also enjoyed a full suite of cars and gas covered for all employees. Unlimited full expense cover trips to any office globally. Holy fuck. Since Amazon does not deliver, er, deliver to the Bahamas, FTX reportedly chartered private planes to fly their orders from Miami to the company headquarters. <laughs> fucking christ dude i i would love that to happen okay but i would probably run a much more financially sound and definitely a much more above board operation ftx's u.s branch was given 200 dollars per day towards doordash food deliveries depending on how many people work there that's not all that much but still though what's with these adult daycares and everybody taking care of oh we'll pay for your lunches all the time and we'll give you massages and all this shit for fuck's sakes former employees express shock over the extent of spending under ftx's disgraced founder uh bankman free right uh who has drawn sharp criticism in bankruptcy court for using his company as his personal fiefdom no he was a good man he's just misunderstood kids leading kids one former employee told the financial times the entire operation was was idiotically inefficient but equally mesmerizing yeah no doubt kind of like that multi-tiered pool that's pretty cool actually i've never witnessed so much money in my life i don't think anybody had including sbf the employee added using bankman's initials we know we got it bankman freed reportedly declined to comment on the report no of course he's got better things to do uh 
new FTX CEO, John Ray the Third. That guy is in an unenviable position. It's like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? All he's got is one singular fire extinguisher, and he's got a fucking California forest fire raging. And other stewards at the company's bankruptcy process have outlined questionable purchases and slipshod accounting practices in various court filings since the company collapsed earlier this month. Oof. One such filing revealed that Alameda Research, FTX's sister company, cryptocurrency trading firm has a $55,319 unpaid tab at Margaritaville Beach Resort in the Bahamas. Sorry, what? What? 50 <laughs> was, it, was that like a six a year's tab or something? Like what what the fuck? The resort was founded by musician Jimmy Buffett. We can figure that out. FTX's attorney said Bankman Freed and his associates used company funds to buy up to $300 million in luxury real estate in the Bahamas. Holy! Including several high-end properties and the exclusive Albany, or in, in the exclusive Albany community. Bankman Freed's ex-lover, ex-lover, Carolyn Ellison, and the group of other talk, top executives lived and worked together from the ritzy penthouse within the resort. What a fetching cup, couple. Ray blasted Bankman Freed's lack of corporate governance in another finding, described the company's bookkeeping as worse than he encountered while overseeing disgraced enemy. Oh, this guy was uh, running. Oh, the Enron collapse too. Jesus Christ. And it's even worse than Enron. Holy fuck. Like that was quite a hilarious Ponzi scheme collapsing. Uh, but en it's funny. It's funny. Does he exclusively oversee the bankruptcies of companies that also sponsored naming rights deals on... Uh, sports stadiums like the Houston Astros okay their place it was Minute Maid Park for a long time I don't know what the fuck it is now but its original name it was Enron Field by the way move out of the Astrodome to Enron Field and then it's like oh fuck now we gotta tear this down like a week after putting up the signs fuck and then FTX yeah like it has right here one former employee spoke to the Financial Times Bankman Fried and other executives would approve major spending such as 135 million dollar naming rights deal for the stadium for the Miami Heat with little regard for return on investment. Yeah, I didn't even know they changed their name. It's like, oh, that's where the heat plays. Isn't that like American Airlines Arena? And then, yeah, getting a celebrity sponsorship deals like Tom Brady doing something with a, I don't know, had a painted super soaker and some CGI monstrosity. I was like, why do you have to do this? Uh, even at the end of the day, everybody knows the letters FTX and the big scheme and scam behind it, but very few people, including myself fully, I know a little bit more about it because I've been heavily invested in this story for a little while, but it, barely anybody knows that that was a crypto exchange, okay? <laughs> so it's like all your lavish spending really didn't know amount to all that much, but it really wasn't about that. It was all about just, you know, washing the funds from the Dems back to the Dems pockets. It was just kind of what, Oh, it just kind of went crazy, the employee said. If Sam said okay, then it was good to go, regardless of the amount. FTX's spending also included major ad campaigns with uh, Tom Brady. Serves as a brand amb ambassador, and he's also getting sued for it right now. In Super Bowl common er, commercial featuring Curb Your Enthusiasm star Larry David. Bankman Freed's family members were also linked to major purpose, er, purchases. All right. Guarding against pandemics. Wait a minute. A nonprofit run by his younger brother, Gabriel Bankman Freed, oh, purchased a Washington, D.C. townhouse for more than $3 million in April. Hmm. He runs a nonprofit. I wonder how he got that money. I'm just wondering. According to media outlet Puck, okay, the nonprofit was partially funded by Bankman Freed. Oh, yeah, nothing sketchy about that at all whatsoever. Meanwhile, Bankman Freed's parents, Stanford law professor Joseph Bankman and Barbara Freed, co signed the deed for a Bahamas beach house that was intended as a vacation home, Reuters reported. The parents said they intend, uh, they intend to return to the property following FTX's downfall. Yeah, and um, the background on Bankman and Freed, not not the kid, not the little money siphoning whiz kid. Okay, the parents right there. I think the old man uh, helped write some SEC laws that work to benefit uh, FTX. Nothing sketchy about that at all. FTX's collapse marked oh, a stunning downfall for Bankman Freed, whose personal fortune was estimated at nearly $16 billion just a few weeks ago. In an interview with Axios this week, Bank Bankman Freed claimed he is now just down to $100,000 in his personal bank account. Yeah, but what about those other ones that you lord over? This story, man, it's not getting the coverage it fucking deserves. Everybody's too busy wondering who Trump wine and dines with. It's like... 
real people's money um, ended up evaporating overnight. But no, that's fine because that guy's linked to the Democratic Party. Oh, take a look at what's going on with the old orange man's wild. Fucking shit's stupid. With all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.